Hello friends, this is lesson number 65 in the series of British Literature in English. And today, in this lesson, we shall consider George Peel, another prominent university which... Again, I say that uh, try to remember Lily Lodge Peel. These are the three university wits uh, from the University of Oxford. Because in the past, there has been a question, or in fact, there have been a number of questions related to the group of university wits. So, Lily Lodge Peel, they belong to the University of Oxford. He was baptized in the year 1556 and died 1596. So there is a one term that is birth and what is baptized or baptism. In Christian religion, it is a ritual where the father, in the church we have a father. So the father throws some drop of water on the newly born child. The purpose may be to remove the sins of the past life or the previous life. So that is called as baptism. In the olden times, the baptism is remembered more than the actual date of birth. So about him, we have several things associated. First, he wrote various forms of a theater like drama, melodrama, comedy, pastoral, historical plays and tragedies and folk plays. He translated the famous work of Euripides. Remember, Euripides among the famous Greek playwrights. He wrote a work, Iphigenius. The full title may be considered as Sacrifice of Iphigenia or Iphigenius or you may call it as Iphigenius because the old names are not sure how to pronounce them or how to even spell them. Just remember this fact that in ancient Greek literature we have three famous playwrights, the tragedy writers, Aeschylus, Sophocles and Euripides and one comedy writer is Aristophanes, just four names, try to remember them. Anyway, so this is the work that he translated from Greek to English, Iphigenius. Now, among his works, the first is the arraignment of Paris. Arraignment. Even in the first time when I read this, I read this word as arraignment. But this is the word arraignment. And the meaning of this word is that uh, when you accuse someone for some guilt and then you bring him to the court for justice, that is called arraignment. Now, this play is performed by children of chapels. Children of chapels. And the story of the play is dominant by the story of Iliad and Odyssey or you may take the reference of Trojan War. So in the Trojan War we have Paris. The same title is here, Paris, the name of the character, Paris, who fell in love with Helena, the most beautiful women in the world. So that is could be considered as a mythical story or the real story of the past in Greek literature. But the point is that the arraignment of Paris is also influenced or in fact it contains the similar sort of story uh, where we have Paris. He is asked by the god Jupiter to decide to whom the golden apple should be given. So we have the three goddesses like Juno, Venus and Pallas. So similar sort of uh, story. So if you do not know anything about Trojan War then you should go to this channel and there is a segment of the European literature and in that you can find a special lecture on Trojan War and there you can find everything about uh, that war and also about the love story of Paris and Helena. So in this story Paris chooses goddess Venus as the beautiful goddess and then his wife the wife of Paris. We have Onin. O-E 
N O N E. She becomes unhappy. So that sort of a plot we have in this play. And one thing we should remember that in this play we have a nymph. Name is Eliza, and that nymph represent the Queen Elizabeth. So this is a just brief introduction about arraignment of Paris, which is influenced by Trojan War. So remember, Paris is the name of the character, not the city Paris of France. The next work by him that is famous Chronicle of King Edward the First. In this play, we have a struggle or conflict between the King Edward the First and Llewellyn. Now, Llewellyn is a Robin Hood sort of a character who is there to help the poor, the common people, and on the other hand, we have the king. So that sort of a struggle is there between these two powers. And uh, the references we can take about this work, like some critics said that this play or some part of this play is not written by George Peel. And most of the play is rambling and episodic, not proceeding scene by scene. We have a name Arthur Henry Bullen. Arthur Henry Bullen. He was the first editor who break this play into scenes. So this is about famous chronicle of King Edward the first. Then we have Titus Andronicus. If you know this name already, so you must be surprised or thinking that this play belonged to William Shakespeare, right? But it is considered by some critics that some part of the play is written by George Peel. So that is why this play is also attributed to George Peel. This play is quite similar to the play written by Christopher Marlowe that is Tamburlaine. So we shall pretty soon consider this play Titus Andronicus when we discuss William Shakespeare. The next is the Battle of Alcazar. This is a five act play and it is about a battle. It talks about the great expedition taken by uh, the names are Francis Drake and John Norris. For this we have to go a bit brief into the history. In 1589, Queen Elizabeth, she sent a fleet against Spain. So that fleet was called as English Armada. In that we have thousands of ships. So that fleet was led by Francis Drake and John Norris. So this play talks about the sea expedition. What happened during that uh, sea voyage? This play also has uh, a historical background related to the King of Morocco and the name is Muli Muloko. Muli Muloko. And he had a nephew, Muli Muhammad. Okay, these are minor names. So there was a conflict between them as well. So that sort of a historical background this play contains. Now the last important work by him that is The Old Wives Tale. The Old Wives Tale. This is the first English work that satirized the drama with the technique of play within the play. So in this play, we have another play is performed by the characters of the play. So let's see how is the plot. We have three young men and they are lost in the jungle and there they get a shelter given by Clunch. He is a blacksmith and he had a wife. The name is Matt Gay. One of the three friends, he sleeps and also Clunch, he also goes to bed. The other two are entertained by the hostess who is Matt Gay, the wife. She entertains them with some fairy tales. And to their surprise, the characters of the fairy tales they appear to be realistic or they come to the life and they start telling another story. So first 
we have a story is told by the hostess and then the character of the story that comes to the real life and then they start telling another story so we have a play within a play now in that story we have two brothers and they are searching for their sister which is held captive by a magician and these two brothers they are also captured by the magician and then we have the appearance of a knight who rescue all these three so that's sort of a simple story it follows the next we have a song written by george peel remember farewell to arms this is a factual point farewell to arms which is written by george peel because by this name we have a novel written by ernest hemingway he is a famous american writer so pretty soon in the future we shall also discuss uh, his works as well so that's all we have for george peel in this lesson just try to remember these important names like arraignment of paris that is influenced by trojan war and then we have famous chronicle of king edward the first then titus andronicus partly associated with him and then the battle of alcazar and then old wife's tale and the last work that is in fact a song which is associated to him that is farewell to arms now so far as the previous year questions are concerned we have one simple question which is asked directly or indirectly sometime options are changed that is related to the university wits remember there are six university wits the first three that we discussed which are Christopher Marlowe, Thomas Nash and Robert Green. These are the university wits from the University of Cambridge. How can you remember? Just consider these names. Christopher Marlowe, a long name. Thomas Nash, still a long name. Then we have Robert Green. So these three belong to the University of Cambridge. Then we have Lily Lodge Peel. Comparatively, these are smaller names. Lily. John Lilly, Thomas Lodge and George Peel. They belong to the University of Oxford. So these are the six university wits. Okay, we have one more university wit that is Thomas Kidd. But sometime it is included and sometime it is not included. So actually what is meant by university wit? The writer of the Elizabethan age who formally studied in the universities they are called as the university wit so about thomas kidd how he is included or how he is not included we shall discuss in the next lesson so that's it for this lesson have a great day